Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing good and I am here with the fourth video of the video series on class 7 science nutrition in plants and this video is all about questions. So we are going to practice a lot of questions on this lesson and this is going to be a great great boost up for you. You will get to know how much have you understood from this lesson, where are your weak areas, which are your strong areas and that will really really help you. So I would request you to watch this complete video and do not skip any of the questions and once you are done with this video try to answer some questions which are there in your textbooks so i hope you'll find this useful let's get started question number one why do organisms need to take food so the same basic question why are we even learning about nutrition so we learned about plant nutrition in this lesson but why do organisms need food for their growth because without food they will not have energy when they don't have energy they can't grow for tissue repair so if any damage happens to any part of the body so for repairing that cell or tissue they again need energy reproduction reproduction is important so that the species can be sustained generations after generations and even reproduction needs energy and energy comes from food Metabolism, the various metabolic processes, the various life processes which happen inside the body of a living organism starting from digestion, respiration, circulation, excretion, everything needs energy to, to perform. So this energy is obtained from food. So basically food provides the nutrients in the form of carbohydrates, proteins, minerals, vitamins etc. And all these nutrients help in the growth and development of the organisms. Resistance against diseases, it also protects the organism from diseases. Now, a str the stronger an organism is, the less probable it is to be attacked by a disease. So, if you eat well, if you have enough energy, you are strong, you are healthy, you are less likely to be attacked by a disease. So, that means it develops the resistance of the body against diseases. Question number two. Distinguish between a parasite and a saprotroph. Now a parasite and a saprotroph, what is the similarity between these two? Both of them fall under the category of a heterotroph. That is both of them depend on some other organism for their food. But when you talk about the difference, parasite derives its nutrients from another living organism. And what is that living organism called? That is host. Whereas saprotroph, they derive their food from dead organism. So they are not dependent on other living organism. Instead, they are dependent on dead organisms. Parasite can harm the host. Saprotroph, in saprotroph, there is no host involved because there is no other living organism involved. Examples of parasites are cuscuta, orchids, Australian Christmas tree, etc. Saprotrophs, you have bacteria, fungi, they are the examples of saprotrophs. Question number three. How would you test the presence of starch in leaves? Now, which kind of leaves will have starch? Those which have undergone photosynthesis. Because the result of photosynthesis is carbohydrates, that is in the form of glucose. But how is this glucose stored inside plants? The glucose gets converted into a polysaccharide which is again a carbohydrate and this starch is stored in the leaves. Now how do we know that starch is present in a leaf or not? So for that we perform a very simple test which is called iodine test. Now what happens in that iodine test is that you put a few drops of iodine on a leaf okay so now if the leaf contains starch in that case the color of the leaf would become bluish black but if there is no starch present in the leaf then there will be no bluish black color so basically it is a very simple test now why this color change happens because iodine reacts with starch to form a, to undergo a chemical reaction and due to that chemical reaction there is this color change but if there is no starch, that chemical reaction will not take place. So it's very simple to decide or to determine whether the plant undergoes photosynthesis or not. So if a plant is not undergoing photosynthesis, you will not be able to find starch in that plant. Question number four. 
give a brief description of the process of synthesis of food in green plants. What is this process of synthesis of food in green plants called? This is called photosynthesis, right? And what is photosynthesis? It is a process where plants prepare their food in presence of sunlight, chlorophyll, they need carbon dioxide and water. So what exactly happens during this entire process is that carbon dioxide and water they combine in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll because it is basically chlorophyll which uh, uh, absorbs the sunlight and converts it into a chemical energy and this forms the carbohydrate. Carbohydrate which is in the form of glucose primarily and this glucose then later gets converted into starch and that's how it is stored inside the leaves of plants and oxygen is released in this process so that's about the process of photosynthesis question number five fill in the blanks green plants are called dash since they synthesize their own food own food self-dependent autotrophs the food synthesized by the plants is stored as so the food that is prepared is in the form of glucose but then glucose gets converted into starch which is also a carbohydrate and it is stored in the form of starch. In photosynthesis solar energy is captured by the pigment called chlorophyll and due to the presence of this pigment the leaves are green in color. During photosynthesis plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. Question number six. Name the following. A parasitic plant with yellow, slender and tubular stem. You remember Kuskuta? So there you saw that they do not have a very thick stem, very thin, almost hair like stems and they are yellow in color due to lack of chlorophyll. A plant that has both autotrophic and heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Think of a plant which can prepare its own food but still it depends on others for its food. So one such example is the insectivorous plants. So maybe you can think of the pitcher plant. So this pitcher plant, they are green in color, they contain chlorophyll so they can prepare their own food but still they eat insects so that means they are heterotrophic also. The pores through which leaves exchange gases. So what are those pores called? They are stomata. Question number seven. Tick the correct answer. Amar bale is an example of autotroph, parasite, saprotroph, host. So Amar bale is basically a parasite. So it lives on other plants and it derives nutrition from other plant. The plant which traps and feeds on insects is Cuscuta, China Rose, Pitcher Plant and Rose. Of course it's Pitcher Plant because it has the leaves which are modified into the pitcher like structures and as soon as the insects come near it they are all trapped inside the pitcher. Question number 8. Match the columns 1 and 2. So here you have column 1 and column 2. Chlorophyll. So where is chlorophyll present? It is present in the leaf of plant. Nitrogen. So whenever we talk of nitrogen, it is a macronutrient for the plant. So they need nitrogen. So how do they get nitrogen? From the soil. And who fixes the nitrogen in the soil? The nitrogen fixing bacteria. So they will match with bacteria. Amarbel. Amarbel is a parasitic plant because it depends on other plants for its food. So it is a parasite. Animals. Animals are all heterotrophs because they all depend directly or indirectly on plants for their food. Insects. Insects are prey for pitcher plant which are insectivorous plants. Question number 9. Mark true and false for each of these statements. Carbon dioxide is released during photosynthesis. Well, this is absolutely false because during photosynthesis, what is released? Oxygen is released and not carbon dioxide. In fact, carbon dioxide is utilized during photosynthesis. 
Plants which synthesize their food themselves are called saprotrophs. Again, absolutely incorrect. Such plants are called autotrophs. Auto means self, so they are self dependent. The product of photosynthesis is not a protein. Yes, that's correct because what is the product of photosynthesis? It is not a protein, rather it is a carbohydrate. Solar energy is converted into chemical energy during photosynthesis. Yes, that's true. So solar energy is trapped by chlorophyll and then it is converted into chemical energy and this chemical energy then helps in the uh, formation of carbohydrate from carbon dioxide and water. Question number 10. Choose the correct option from the following. Which part of the plant takes in carbon dioxide from the air for photosynthesis? root hair, stomata, leaf vents and sepals. So the gaseous exchange is totally done by stomata. They are tiny openings on the tiny pores on the leaves. We choose the correct option from the following. Plants take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere mainly through their root, stem, flowers or leaves. Of course leaves because leaves have the stomata and through stomata they take in carbon dioxide. I hope you found this video as well as this entire video series on class 7 science nutrition in plants useful. If at all you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the ask question section of examfear.com. The link is given in the description. And if you have any feedback, write to us in the comment section. We will be so happy to hear from you. And I will see you all very soon with a new lesson, with a new topic. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.